The PB4000 is quite a nice improvement over the existing PB13 Ultra platform, which has been a gold standard for home theater subwoofers for quite some time. Since becoming an SVS affiliate, I've heard nearly every ported box subwoofer they make, including the PB2000 and the PB16 Ultra subwoofers. Now the SVS equipment is not mine to keep, I send it back when I'm done with it. And if you're inclined to support this channel, you can follow the links in the description below for SVS products. It really makes a big difference. And you can check out my other videos on setting up your AVR, the gain hack video, and also how to start using Room EQ Wizard to measure your own subwoofers. Now in hearing this subwoofer after hearing the other subwoofers, it taught me something about the SVS line. Now all too often, people get fixated on two things, factory rated frequency response and max SPL. I can honestly say that if you focus solely on these two things, you can make some expensive mistakes. Factory frequency response ratings only tell you when a subwoofer stops being measurably audible, but says nothing about the depth of presentation. There are countless subwoofers that are rated to 20 Hz, but they are far too shallow for my taste. The graph shapes can be dramatically different, and it's really confusing to those who are new to the idea of truly deep bass, which is really an uncommon thing in home audio. What that translates to is a less impressive presentation with the exact same factory rating. Two 19 Hz rated subs can sound drastically different. In contrast, a ported SVS subwoofer is powerful and strong as low as you can hear. It's a dramatic departure from the norm and one of the reasons I started this channel. Shallow bass is truly unsatisfying. Now the other well-intentioned fixation that some people have is on max SPL. Now, it, when it comes to cars, it's called bench racing. Based on the numbers, this car should beat that car, but that's rarely the whole story. It's the same thing here, and you can see my video on the top 10 base myths, uh, but essentially max SPL is not a decision maker for me. I mean, honestly, I couldn't care less about max SPL. When comparing subs, I don't find it to be a useful metric. A sub with a lower max SPL can deliver a far more impressive base presentation than a sub with a higher max SPL. The things I look for are depth of presentation, low distortion at depth, and what I can only describe as potency. So if a sub does not sound deep, I'm turned off. And if it doesn't have, you know, it could have extension down to the teens and still sound shallow to me. And likewise, if it's all distortion at depth, that's a huge turn off for me as well. But then there's potency. I asked Ed Mullen at SVS if there was a measurement for potency, and he said the term I was looking for is dynamic headroom. And I completely agree with that. Uh, it does describe exactly what I'm hearing. And Ed Mullen is a great source of information. Uh, he's helped me understand several complicated issues, including how your crossover settings on your AVR actually work. You know, his, imp his input has been invaluable to me. The problem is, a lot of enthusiasts are familiar with the term dynamics, but I know I personally struggled with what dynamics really translates to in real world performance. For me, potency might be the incorrect technical descriptor, but I think it's an easier concept for people to understand. And nothing demonstrates potency like the accountant. Uh, the suppressed fire in this movie is absolutely nuts. And exactly how nuts depends on the subwoofer's potency or dynamic headroom. Within the SVS ported subwoofer line, potency is directly related to wattage. Now, I don't personally listen any louder with the higher wattage subwoofers. My listening habits stay about the same, but I've never experienced anything quite like dual PB16 Ultras massaging my internal organs like it did with that scene in The Accountant. It's seriously unreal and shocking the first time you experience it. I've legitimately scared people with that scene. It's phenomenal. It's also weirdly comfortable. Uh, I could feel the impact on my spleen, but it didn't hurt my ears, which are notoriously tender. It was a beautiful thing. The PB4000s also touch my spleen, just not as dramatically, and that's the difference in potency. The PB4000s are just as comfortable as the PB16 Ultras are, uh, easily louder than anyone needs, and it's easy to see the effect of the PB4000s 1200 watts. It's just outstanding, and within the SVS line, more wattage means more realism. To me, realism is when the line between watching a movie and real life is blurred. Those with dual ported SVS subwoofers can relate. Thunder sounds and feels more like real thunder compared to a typical shallow subwoofer. It's more believable. So really the takeaway boils down to potency, but more important, how can you budget for dual subwoofers? Having gone back to single subwoofers twice, two things really stand out. 
You lose bass response with a single, even if your graph says otherwise. I can't really explain that, but I call it Swiss cheese bass, which is the standing wave effect. You get obvious dead spots as you move around the room. And even if your measurements suggest that your response is perfect, you still have missing response. It's weird and I, I just can't explain it. The other thing I notice is mild discomfort with a single subwoofer. It's not as bad for me as sealed subs are, but still it's noticeably less comfortable than with duals. It's like driving down the road at 70 miles an hour with one window down. If two windows are down, it's not as bad. It's a pressure thing. So you can try that out and see if you notice a pressure difference. On the freeway, roll down one window and then roll down another window and see if you can feel a difference. For me, I, I can definitely notice that and that's the closest thing I can find to describing what I'm experiencing here in this room. Now you'd think that pummeling my ears with twice the wattage would be worse, but it's actually more comfortable and that's totally counterintuitive, but that's my experience. Now, of course, you have to reduce the, your AVR subwoofer level because you get more output from duals uh, to get them the same. Uh, and, but, and also, duels easily deliver more potency. But all things equal, duels are just more comfortable for me. I can hear all of the bass, and the feeling is just more impressive. With dual SVS subs, you get more of that movie theater feel, but much deeper than most commercial movie theaters. And I mean much deeper. So if you're looking at this subwoofer, you really should budget for two. If not, I'd recommend dual PB2000s all day long. I can say without question that dual PB2000s sound better than the PB16 Ultra or PB4000 as a single. That's been true from the very first two versus one comparison I've done. Now, dual, there's no question that PB4000 or PB16 Ultras are gonna sound more impressive than dual PB2000s. But when you're comparing one sub to dual subs, dual subs almost always come out ahead. I get the question nearly every day. Should I get one PB4000 or two PB2000s? You know, should I get one PB2000 or two PB1000s? You know, if you're going so far as to get an SVS subwoofer, get the most out of it by splitting your budget for duals. That's where the real satisfaction is, in my opinion. If you go factory direct, you have a year to upgrade. So rather than getting one now and another one you can, get two now and have excellent base from the start. Now you pay actual shipping costs if you do the one year trade up, but otherwise you get what you paid as credit. If you go through a dealer or Amazon, you probably won't get the trade up, so Factory Direct is the best option if you can. Shipping is always free with SVS except for the trade up. That's the one time they ask you to pay for shipping. If movies are important to you, I definitely stick with the ported version. Again, I find ported more comfortable and they easily have more output than the sealed versions. That said, the sealed version of the 4000 and 16 Ultra do a great job of sounding like deep ported subwoofers. It's really quite impressive. So if space is an issue, or if you really prefer sealed, those are good options. Just keep in mind that a sealed sub needs more power to achieve the same output as a ported sub. If you want the same output as a ported sub, I'd shoot for double the wattage in a sealed subwoofer. An example would be the ported PB1000s had more output than the sealed SB2000s, which had a bigger driver and about 60% more power. Now, I'm not against sealed subs, I just want you to go in with the right expectations. But all in all, I'm very pleased with the way the PB4000s perform. I first got in touch with SVS because they really understand bass and know how to produce that deep sound that everyone wants, even if they don't realize that's what they're looking for. In that respect, there were no surprises with the PB4000. I'm happy that the Black Oak version comes with a $100 discount. Uh, I prefer the Black Oak finish because of the dogs and things like that. They're easier to clean, but the piano gloss is absolutely gorgeous. A few more highlights are the full five-year warranty, which includes the amplifier. Uh, with any subwoofer, it doesn't matter which brand, amps tend to be the point of failure. And some companies have shorter amp warranties, and that can really make a difference. You get a full 45 days to listen and free shipping, even if you send them back. Now these show up on a pallet in a semi, so free shipping really makes a difference. And I didn't even touch on the SVS app, which is awesome. Essentially, you can tailor these to sound like almost any subwoofer out there. One thing I plan to do in the RV project is show what a shallow subwoofer sounds like using the parametric EQ and the preset functions. Basically, I'd shave off gobs of low end output, boost the 60 to 80 hertz range, and voila, you have a typical shallow subwoofer. I won't even have to carry around several different kinds of subs, so it's very versatile. 
If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you enjoy it and you're inclined to support the channel, following my affiliate links in the description below, especially for SVS products, makes a huge difference. You can also hit my Amazon page before you order anything. Just do a search for my page. Uh, it, it's a free way to support the channel with your Amazon purchases. Of course, the easiest thing to do is hit the like and subscribe button, and leaving a comment is always appreciated. If you haven't seen the 5,000 subscriber video yet, the PB2000 giveaway deadline is March 31st, 2018, so be sure to enter. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.